Hello my brothers and sisters of Dior, welcome back to Dior, I'm Celtic Templar, and today y'all we're actually going to be discussing the history and evolution of scale armor. Now, I don't know if I have to put this out here, scale armor is kind of one of my favorite types of armor out there. There are different variations on scale armor. The first ever recorded use of it was somewhere in Egypt or the Middle East sometime during the 2nd millennium BC and it was kept being used up until the late 17th century AD. However, there are some reports that in Asia it was still used up until the, well, 19th century, as some people say. But it depends on their variation in history. So, most of our evidence of these type of armor mostly is from nomadic style culture. In fact, most evidence actually proves that this type of armor came from nomadic style culture itself. And the first ever, well, where it was actually first designed was not with plate, as we see, but with actually leather, boiled leather to be more precise. Now, there is actually a weird story that actually goes around that the first plate uh, type of metal that was used for it was mostly copper, prior before bronze and iron. Now, in such, it was actually stated to have been the best preserved uh, scale armor of antiquity actually comes from a set based in the 8th to 3rd century BCE and this was actually discovered in the Eurasian steppes and this type of armor is kind of impressive actually. Now I want to put this out here there are different variations of scale armor and the fact is there are different versions of it depending on the area that in which it was located in. In fact as I said, the first ever type of design was mostly of leather, then it went to plate armor such as copper, then bronze, and then iron. Now, the first ever recorded use was probably somewhere during the Middle East or as well Egypt, such as in Babylon, Persia, Egypt, Israel, and such. However, there are also major connections of it even reaching the areas of China and as well even Japan. In fact, if any of y'all have ever seen the movie The Last Samurai, well, you pretty much do see a form of scale armor in there. That was traditional. In fact, there is also this traditional Japanese-style scale armor, that of which I kind of like. But scale armor in general was actually the most common of nomadic or horseman-style armor, seeing the fact it was light and effective. In fact, Rome that adopted it it's probably from the Persians, most people historians say. However, even the Celts actually had their own version of it, of which was stated to have the scale uh, plates uh, sewn onto the fabric of Gambeson. Now, there is also the Ger Eastern Germans, or Eastern Germanic people, who also had the same type of idea. So, many historians actually state that scale armor could have probably evolved mostly from Eurasia or as well parts of the Middle East. Now, the most majority, if we can understand it, it could actually cover anything like in this type of general area as we see on the map. The darker blue shows that it will be pretty much more in general into that type of area. In other words, where it's closely related. In other words, the further back it actually went to being used. So this gives us a good estimation of where it could have actually been and how it further along the line went to. Now, this is just a general assembly type of design I had to do myself, but you get the point. It actually does get its point across of how uh, further back it was actually further used. Now, the Romans did design their own version, like the one I'm wearing. Then there was also a uh, another design of scale armor that actually had a double, a doubler design for the said shoulders. Now, the Romans also designed a fully articulated version, in other words, it had sleeves attachment, and as well, all the way down to the knees, which I am looking online if anyone is ever going to create one like that for down to the knees and such, because that would pretty much be a very light armor. Now, there's also the infamous Indian-style scale armor, which were very rare, but very also common. 
There is also the infamous Etruscan type design that was somewhat discovered in northern Italy. Problem is, it was not fully uh, decorated or such. In fact, it was so badly kept, they, there's not much we can understand of what it might have looked like, sadly. But as well, even when we take a look at history, the evolution of the armor evolved and also devolved in a type of way. Now, the armor I'm wearing right here is that of the Roman style. There is also the Egyptian style, the Persian style, the Celtic style, as I just said, and so on and so on. So, how did each one of them come around? Well, let me get, let's get into that. Now, when we think of the automatic of scale armor, such as with the Bronze Age, like that of Persia, or uh, Babylon, or Egypt, well we can immediately take a look at some films that do get it a little historically accurate, such as a couple of them, biblical ones, I think, give a good estimation, but they're very rare and very hard to understand. And no, I do not recommend anybody watching the movie 300 that does not give a good estimation of Persian armor. It's just a bad take from Hollywood. So... Whenever I think of the Persian-style armor equipment, it was actually stated to have been attached to a wool lining with sewn-on type of plates, like this. Now, the thing is, the Romans copied from that and designed their own version, like this. However, the Romans took it a little step further and decided to attach them with a small ringlet. That's right, these are actually a small ringlet that attaches each one to itself. Kind of like how we would understand with the scale mail. Now, scale mail is like uh, riveted or butted rings with the scales. Here's the thing, I have to be a better of bad news, but that is mostly not exactly historically accurate. That is probably just something your uh, cheap friend or whatever from LARP said is historically accurate, but it's not. So, yeah. Now it had riveted, maybe. Maybe. Is a thing. But as I said, the evolution of scale armor chose different paths depending on its area. The Romans that designed this took it from the Persian design, but they improved it to make it interlock and intersway together. In other words, kind of like laminar. However, unlike laminar, it was connected together with small little rings in order to keep these together. Now, that is one of a few hundred major steps to creating scale armor. The one major thing about scale armor, though, it always points... The one major uh, way you could kill somebody in this is if you thrust upward and into the body, which this is actually how... Much this was actually really cool. In fact, this stuff was also nicknamed Dragon Scale Armor. So, uh, if you think about it, or Lizard Scale, because if you think about it, this actually does look like a Lizard Scale system, or Snake Skin Armor, as it's sometimes been known as, by early Egyptians. So, why is it that this armor I like the most? Well, kind of obvious, because there is little information on detail how far it goes back. However, there are different variants to its type of timeline. Now, if I was to say wear armor like this, like what I'm wearing, this would have actually been worn by a wealthy elite. In other words, somebody that which was uh, higher ups, for example. Because the smaller the scale is, like the smaller the scale plates are, the more costly it is, but it actually adds more protection. Which is kind of weird. Compared to that of the cheaper design, that which is used by some foot soldiers or minor nobles. Something like this. Now, this is a Lords of Battles model, but it does get my point across. This is kind of like what the Welsh or uh, early Welsh nobles, or the Byzantine military used. And the thing is, these would have actually still done their job just like scale armor pretty much protected and such. Now, I don't think they would have had it riveted on leather backing, which makes no sense. Uh, 
but still to this day, I would have to say they would mostly likely been attached to cloth. Something like that of like this, gambeson. Gambeson would be the best option for underneath, depending on the culture and region. Now, as I said, the Celts, the Germans and such of Eastern tribes did wear something just like that. And in fact, even the Dacians wore a form of scale armor, that in which was attached to their regular style tunics, like something like this. As you see this tunic right here, they would have actually sewn on the scales on this tunic, making it very light and effective. So I might, what I might end up doing, I might take the scales off of this and probably put them on a tunic like this. Though that will probably be some other video some other time, because that will probably be a long time and process to manufacturing something like that. But it's an open door area for me there, so yeah. Now, I hear many people already asking, but Templar, isn't this armor a little obsolete compared to laminar? Not exactly, because the pros and cons of scale armor compared to laminar are as follows. One major pro is one, this is easy to repair. Two, this is easy to maintain. And pretty much that's actually how it, and as well, three is also slightly bit lighter. Though the con, the cons about this is one, the cost in manufacturing. What do I mean by that? Simple. This is going to cost a lot more money than scale, uh, than, uh, well, laminar would. In fact, the laminar does have a lot of flaws, though. One major flaw is, one, you have to repair the lacing every once in a while, and two, that armor, as soon as you get, like, say, a damaged, uh, well, piece of plate, you're going to have to actually swap it out, and in doing so, you're going to have to replace the entire cord while you're at it. These, though, all, especially, like, the Roman style, all you had to do was remove the plate piece, and then put a new one in. That was it. That was the only thing you needed to do, which is why scale was kind of used a very long amount of time, especially by the Welsh or Roman Britons, whatever you want to pronounce them as, as well as even the, well, Byzantine Empire, or as well even the late Roman Empire. In fact, many people in China did use scale armor just like that, but it would have been very rare to see. Now, even the Greeks would have worn scale armor, but not like this. What they would have worn would have been their lionel thorax, and they would have actually taken scale like this, but put it on their stomach. This would have actually been a hard shell type area to keep the blow of a weapon from killing them. And that's actually saying something, which is kind of hilarious. Now, many people do ask, though, but Templar... How did scale armor evolve in its type of way? Well, it did evolve in its type of major forms. One from the major form of its originally just a cloth, a form of cloth like tunic, like this, being sewn on with scales. Then it evolved to the Roman design, like this, of which had more than one variation. Then it started to degrade as well. In other words, the scales started to get bigger. The one major problem about scale armor, the bigger the scale, the more likely you're probably going to get killed. Because, one, it exposes a lot more with the bigger type scales. Because, as you see here, it's a lot easier for me to slide a weapon in a lot easier compared to something like, well, this. It's almost impossible. Yeah, bigger scales, more likely you're going to get killed. Now, scale armor, though, did have one major flaw. It wasn't as strong as laminar. Laminar was kind of like a dense shell system compared to scale. But that didn't stop people from still using this. And the fact is, this was used by countless Roman commanders as well as even uh, Roman standard bearers. In fact, the first recorded account of it being used in the Roman military would be by the eagle bearers, which, yeah. But for the Persians, it would most likely have been used by the Persian elites, the Persian immortals, the Persian nobles. 
but for Egyptians, definitely Egyptian nobles. And the fact is, we can understand why. The armor was incredibly light and yet effective, and this could actually stop the blows of certain weapons. Now there's also the uh, many nomadic type warriors from history that did wear something like this, such as the uh, Scythian type noble horsemen who rode into battle wearing fully armored scale equipment. And there are many others actually out there. However, scale armor would slowly start to degrade and be slightly replaced with laminar, being the fact that laminar was cheaper to manufacture. But if you ask me, I still rather prefer scale a little bit because this, uh, when I'm moving in it, I don't feel much fatigue. I feel light and effective in the battlefield. Now, there are some problems that some historians debate about this, if it was effective enough against arrow fire. Yes and no, depending on what actually probably got shot at you. Because, one, I doubt this will stop a crossbow, but, uh... Because, one, this thing gives a little bit, so you could still feel the blow of the crossbow hitting you compared to an arrow fired from a longbow. But... I think I'll leave Scalagrim's uh, demonstration video for that, but yeah. Now, as I said, there are different variations depending on the region and such. Some in which, during the early, very, very early medieval period, there are accounts of scale armor being used, especially also on the Bayou Tapestry. Now, that is a rare myth I have actually been told, and which I still haven't seen, but I'm still looking into that part. But there is also many accounts that scale armor was used in historical style warfare, especially throughout the Mediterranean. Now, scale armor doesn't get much of a good rap sheet in history for some weird reason, because most people don't look it up. Because whenever people think of scale armor, they automatically don't know what it looks like, or they just think it's a small scale. Because literally, you could just Google it in, and you automatically get something like, uh, scale, not this, but more of like somebody, a little figurine or whatever. That's, uh, that's what I normally end up encountering. So, yeah. So, how many cultures used scale armor? Well, as y'all can see from this image here with what I had to do countless research to, mostly a lot of Eurasians and such actually used this. However, there was a last recorded account of scale armor somewhat being used in India. Now, this might actually be a little weird, but knowing to the fact on how far this armor could have spread, the darker blue, as we could understand, is actually how much it could have spread throughout the time during the, well, uh, 2nd millennium BC to pretty much about, say, uh, the end of the Bronze Age. At least that's my best theory. Now, as I said, there is different der different variations on history on where this armor came from. Some historians state it might have actually come from uh, the Middle East or Egypt. Honestly, I have to believe it's more of an a said nomadic style armor because one, this stuff is light and effective enough to feel more of a nomadic style type equipment. And it's no wonder nomadic people probably kept using this for a long amount of time, rather than using their plate armor. Now, the first ever recorded amount we have of plate armor like this being used was in Egypt or Babylon or Persia. Knowing to the fact, that's pretty much because they had the raw, the raw material. But, if we had something like made out of leather or boiled oxide and such, like this image, then that's more nomadic. But there were accounts that nomadic warriors did use some sort of steel to make their armor. But if you ask me, the history of scale armor is a sad forgotten point in history. And there are many designs of scale. Now, there are also amounts of scale-plated helmets. But I really wouldn't recommend putting a helmet made out of scales on my head, knowing to the fact those things are not... Because the way this thing moves and such, it moves like with the body. Meaning, this thing's not going to stop the heavy blow onto a skull if you wear it. 
Because if any of y'all have ever played Kingdom Come Deliverance, you know that helmet is worth nothing. But, yeah. But, as I said, there are different versions like this model. This Roman design version is... If you ask me, I think I'd rather prefer this design, other than the fact there are different versions. Now, the Chinese did have what they call Le Marco, uh, what I could only pronounce as Laminar Scale Armor. Which, apparently, is you take the scales just like you would a normal shirt, except you sewed them together like laminar. And these were on normal fabric-like shirts, and they were actually found in the area of the, well, the Terracotta Army. And these were mostly worn probably by noblemen and such, and this type of equipment could have actually stopped certain blows of weaponry. But... Honestly, we don't actually have much evi pictorial evidence of what it might have looked like, sadly. There is some accounts, though, that over the years, the scale armor died off in Western Europe, and it would slowly degrade over the time of the fall of the Western Roman Empire. But it did reach Europe at one point in time, but died off sometime afterwards. Some historians state maybe because the armor was ineffective. I wouldn't go that far. Knowing to the fact, this armor was used pretty much up until the end of the 17th century and such in Europe says otherwise. In fact, the last recorded account of Europeans using scale armor were the winged hussars. The winged hussars did use a form of scale armor, but it's not as much remembered, sadly. But with Rome, yes. With Persia, yes. Egypt, yes. And so on. So why was this armor used for so long in those regions? Well, that can easily be answered. One major reason why. Uh, because of the terrain and such, it was mostly meant for, you guessed it, nomadic style warfare. Where this armor would reign king. And the fact is, it is light and effective, and I hardly feel fatigue whenever I'm wearing this. Like, literally, I can actually move in this stuff, I can swing my sword in this. And I don't feel that much fatigue in it, compared to most armors I wear. In fact, this is somewhat lighter than my laminar, or even my male armor. So, I have to say, this armor is king for at least for a while, until I get some other type that I think is probably king. Uh, but yeah. Anyways, guys, like and subscribe for more if any of y'all have any ideas for me to do a video on, especially related to history. As well, y'all, let me know in the comments below if y'all have any ideas on other forms of scale armor out there. And we'll pretty much talk about it more afterwards. Anyways, guys, like and subscribe. Hope to see y'all in the next one. Have a great day, y'all. Mm -hmm.